Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to be working a little bit more on the PLCs today. Um, I'm going to start off just showing you how to add a thermal overload, and then we'll just kind of work from there, hopefully catch up to where we are in class. Um, and I'm hoping to have this video up and on YouTube by the end of the day. So in class, a lot of you guys have dropped another row here and just added a basic input or output and that'll latch when the contactor latches just like the ceiling circuit and this you guys have running to a relay and so that'll be a new output and that's where some of you are some of you are a little bit further you'll have your thermal overload and your two maintained switches so we'll call this limit switch one this one we'll call limit switch 2 and this one will be our overload and so I'm just going to quickly run through and define them again these are all inputs and so there we go now this is pretty much where everybody's at in class some people are a little bit further ahead um, I'm going to go ahead and just keep building on this. You guys can follow along if you want. If you don't, you can wait for class on Monday. Um, but what some people have been working on is they've dropped another row. They have another normally open contact, which is hooked up to their relay. So that when the relay switches, a timer goes off. And to get that, you're going to go over here to timer operations. You're going to double click on this T-O-N right here at the top. And it'll, uh, this will come up. Just hit OK. And down here is how long you want it to wait before it switches. So, And it counts in milliseconds. So every thousand you put in here is one second. So we'll have it wait two seconds. And then it'll go ahead to an output maybe. And this will be called light. Oh, oops. Light. No, why is it not letting me? There we go. Light 1. And again, this is just another output. This can be anywhere in your panel. Um, it really serves only for an example. And so the way this is going to. Oh, whoops. That should be an output. Uh, global output. There we go. So the way you would hook this up is just like you did your start stop before your thermal overload on your contactor the output side of it will go into your 0 0.2 at the top of your PLC your switches will go to 3 and 4 at the top of the PLC and that's pretty much it you're also going to pull a wire for the relay from point 0.1 on the bottom of the PLC over to the hot side of the relay and then you're going to run your neutral back to your terminal strip and you're going to do the same for your light except it's going to come out of 0 0.2 on the bottom of your relay and so this is where most of you are um, I'm actually going to pull up a quick project just to show you guys what I've been working on um, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit open three phase motor with thermal overload yes I'm going to save the current changes Oh, and then there we go. So we're going to go here into our main block system. And so at first this can look a little bit daunting. I know it looks a little weird. Um, but this is basically everything you guys have. So this is a combination of everything we've done in the past. E even back when we were just jogging a relay back in, I think it was our old shop goes right back to that so you have your start stop latch overload just like you guys had before um, I have an output here that uh, it goes to a light that tells us that the contactor that latches motor one is operational so when that green light comes on it means your first motor is spinning and I also hooked up a jog here in series with our start and that goes straight to the contactor and so when you push the jog if the stop is not pushed, it'll just spin the contactor and nothing else. I've also added some inputs here that just basically go to lights. So if your overload 
is true or your overload is working, the overload true or the overload working light will come on. If your maintain switch at the bottom of your panel is on, the light will come on and tell you that. If you're a second switch, etc. I've also hooked up a fail safe light, so in the event that you do all this and your contactor does not work, uh, when you push the start button, half a second after you push it, if the con if the contactor up here has not come on, then the power will go through this timer, through this normally closed contact, and go to the failure light, which is essentially just another light that will be somewhere in the panel, and it will say, motor one not working. And here is another output. It's just something I've been working on. I'm trying to see if I can hook two programs on two different programs on two different PLCs and sync them together. So all this line here really does is if contactor one has power and jog is not being pushed, send to output six and output six will be wired to a second PLC. Uh, this is just something I've been playing around with. So again, you see our jogs, which are done just like we did before. Um, you can even just you don't really have to put it before the stop, but you should. Um, you could technically just drop it right off this row here. Um, there's not really much else to talk about, so I'm just going to end the video right there.